I've been able to get over a billion streams on songs that I've worked on over the past few years. And I did almost all of it in my bedroom studio in Colorado where there's virtually no big industry connections. So today I'm gonna tell you the story of how I've been able to work on big songs with artists like 21 Savage, Future, SZA, and many more to be able to get all of these streams. And if you stick around to the very end, I'm gonna show you the exact dollar amount that I've made from these billion streams. Let's dive in. All right, so if we rewind back to around 2020, I was in a place where I was really only focused on type beats. So pretty much what I was doing was sending my loops and samples out to bigger type beat producers and we would collab on the beat together and then split the sales 50-50. And at this time, that was 100% my primary focus. I was just worried about making money off of YouTube type beats and I was doing really well for myself with it. I was making good money through late 2020. Then I started making a bunch of money in 2021 doing that. And it was around this time that there would be rappers who found my beat on YouTube and they would get big artists featured on it like Enelie Choppa or G Herbo, which was super sick. There was also a good amount of big overseas guys on my beats as well. Like I had a song on Daily Duppy with French the Kid. I had another song with a dude named Artie. And I started getting a decent amount of streams from those songs virtually by putting no effort in to get those streams because they were just finding my beats online and then putting the songs out with them. And while I did think that this was super cool that I had these songs with millions of streams out, it really didn't change my strategy at all because I was making good money with the online stuff. So I wasn't going to change my focus into trying to get more more songs. And a little bit later in 2021, I decided to go even further into the e-commerce kind of lane and I created my own sample pack store, Loop Stash. So I started selling sample packs and I was putting out these sample packs for music producers to buy every single week. I actually started this YouTube channel so that I could do tutorials showing off the sounds from my kits to hopefully get some more sales to that, which is kind of funny because this has grown into something way bigger than that at this point. But the point is I started putting out content consistently to try to grow my brand. I was just like, fuck getting big songs with these famous rappers. I can make consistent money doing this stuff online. I can set my own schedule. I don't have to go out to these studio sessions and be out till four in the morning or whatever it is. But as I was kind of building a name for myself, doing all that online stuff, more people were starting to notice me. And among those, a legendary producer, TM88, found one of my loop kits from my sample store from an Instagram ad. And then he ended up DMing me and saying I had fire and that we should start working. From there, I started sending him the loops that I was making every single day. And I didn't really hear anything back from him ever. <laughs> Until we fast forward all the way to 2022 when he hit me up and told me that we had one with DJ Khaled. And at this point, this was definitely the biggest name that I had on one of my beats. So I was stoked and I waited a few months not really hearing anything about it until DJ Khaled started promoting his new album, God Did. So I was super hyped to see who he had on the beat that we did. And when the track was dropped, I found out I had Future and SZA on my beat, which was an insane feeling. And when I found out, I just couldn't believe that just putting out my sample packs online led to TM88 finding my stuff and then placing my stuff with Future and SZA. But anyways, on the same day, my song with DJ Khaled, Future and SZA dropped, but I also had a song drop with Lil TJ called Beat the Odds, which is actually my biggest song and Lil TJ found that beat on YouTube from a random Drake type beat that me and my boy Desires had made. And after experiencing that feeling, it's safe to say that I definitely got addicted to it. And I wanted to take getting big songs like these more serious because my thought was if I had gotten Future, SZA and Lil TJ on my beats virtually by having no connections to them and just just from people finding my stuff online and then using it from there, if I actually applied myself to this, I could probably get an insane amount of placements. So from there, I started taking placement opportunities a lot more seriously. I was going out to LA, Atlanta, and all those kind of places for writing camps to meet people and just try to get in rooms that I wasn't in when I was here in Colorado. And among those opportunities that I got, my boy Greg Mateo at BeatStars Publishing actually gave me an opportunity to work with Suicide Boys. So he started sending out my stuff for me and I eventually got a record called Champagne Face with them that went crazy. I think it's got around 50 million streams. And I ended up actually creating a great relationship with Suicide Boys. And now I have six songs released with them that have all done insane numbers. But anyways, since the start of 2023, I just started getting more and more records consistently. I went from having around three big records in 2022 to having over 30 big records drop in 2023. So that was a huge jump in consistency. And although none of them were as big as those Future, SZA, and Lil TJ songs, songs that dropped before. In the summer of 2023, I had some huge releases. I had two on Lil TJ's album, one with Summer Walker and one with Polo G. I had one on Key Glock's album and I had four on Rila Rodriguez's album. One being Equal Dirt, which ended up going crazy viral on TikTok. Both those songs on the Lil TJ album were from YouTube type beats that he had found and recorded on. Again, virtually doing no work to get those placements. And for three out of the four songs I did on the Rila Rodriguez album, including Equal Dirt, I got those through my online brand as well without doing 
doing any industry stuff to get them. For one of them, they got it from a YouTube type beat. For another one, someone bought my loop kit, made a beat with it, and got Rilo on it. And then for Equal Dirt, my boy G06 actually bought one of my vocal kits on my website and then ended up getting it placed with Rilo. And I had a huge realization. Even though I was actively chasing placements, the vast majority of the placements I was getting were not from me chasing placements. I was getting almost every single placement from someone finding something on YouTube, someone buying a kit, or just someone finding my stuff online somehow. And it taught me the key lesson that it's better to build your brand up and build yourself up to the point that people end up coming to you instead of having to go and chase every single opportunity by yourself. If you have enough people coming to you, the chances that you get are just multiplied like crazy. I'm gonna get right back into the video in just a second, but I wanted to tell you about this new free drum kit that I just dropped. It's got over 300 crazy drum sounds that are all from the best drum makers inside of my Discord server. The kit is completely free. All you need to do is put in your email and I'll send you the link to it. So click the first link in the description down below if you wanna get some new drum sounds and make some hard hitting beats. Anyways, the rest of 2023, I just continued to get more placements every single month and almost every single one was just from my online stuff. I had a song called 24 Hours to Live with Joyner Lucas that he just found from a YouTube type beat. I had a song on Jeezy's album where a producer bought my loop kit and then ended up placing it with Jeezy. Mozzie found one of the beats on YouTube using my samples. And at this point, my streams were definitely racking up because I just had so many songs out there and I had those huge songs that were still doing numbers from early in 2022. And it did not feel like it was going to slow down anytime soon. It felt like I was just getting placements faster and faster. But at the top of 2024, I had two huge releases. Letter to My Brother and Dark Days on 21 Savage's album American Dream. On Letter to My Brother, that same vocal kit that G06 bought for Equal Dirt by Rallo Rodriguez, he actually used on this song. And on Dark Days, I sent a vocal starter inside of my free Discord server and my boy Yusuf flipped it, sent it back in the loop section of the server. And then Jonas Lee found the loop and worked with Kid Hazel, 21 Savage, producer on the beat and ended up getting it placed there and getting these two huge songs was definitely the closest feeling I've had to those first two big songs that dropped with future SZA and TJ back in 2022 and I just couldn't believe that I just kept getting these huge rappers through my online presence and as my brand and following grew and more people were seeing everything more of these placements just started to come and occasionally some of these massive songs come out as well but even without those 221 Savage records this year has been fucking insane in the very beginning of the year I set the goal that I wanted 52 big placements released. I wanted one to drop every single week of the year. And right now it's a little over halfway through the year and I've already got 42 songs that have released, which is fucking nuts. So from where I stand right now, I truly believe that one of the best ways that you can get these big songs, tons of streams is just build up your own personal brand and let opportunities to work on these songs find you. And also another thing that I think has helped me get a lot of these songs and kind of stand out from other producers is I go the extra mile with a lot of the kits and loops and just ideas that I make because I'm actually hiring session musicians and vocalists to do real live instruments and custom vocals for all the stuff that I'm putting out. Also, one big thing I've learned is I think a lot of people have this kind of way of thinking in their mind. They don't want to cut in anyone else. They just want to do it all on their own. And I just think this limits you out of all of my placements. I think I can only count maybe one or maybe two where it's only me on the beat. So don't be afraid to work with people. Everyone is out there playing their part, trying to make something happen with it. Anyways, back to the streams. If I look right here on this app called muso.ai, at the time of this recording, I've got over 1.1 billion streams, which is fucking crazy. And if you look through this with me, you can see that I do have a good amount of songs that have a lot of streams, but a ton of my records don't get these insane numbers. I just have this huge catalog of songs. And other than a handful of these that I actually did with people, they're all from my online business. And one thing I want to point out is you don't need one huge mega hit with a billion streams to get to this point. You can just work on building a huge catalog with these smaller records. But if you add up a shit ton of records, it adds up to a huge amount of streams. Anyways, that's pretty much where I'm at today. And my strategy to continue to grow this and get more records and move my way to 2 billion streams. But moving forward, I'm not going to intend intentionally chase and try to get these records. I'm just going to keep on improving my music, improving what I do best, putting it out to the world through my YouTube 
YouTube channel, type beats, putting out my sound kits online, putting out free loops to my Discord server, anywhere and everywhere that I can. Because one, doing all those things and selling my loop kits, doing type beats, all this stuff is actually putting food on my table and paying me consistently every month. But two, the placements just keep flowing with me doing what I'm doing. Honestly, I feel like it's the perfect recipe because just doing industry stuff could be super stressful because the money is super up and down. I mean, you could work with Drake in the studio for a year on 50 records and not one of them drop. So with the online brand, you can make a living for yourself. And then on the side, when more people start to notice your stuff, a lot of those ideas and beats that you make can end up finding homes on big records and getting you a ton of streams. Anyways, like I promised, since you stayed to the end of this video, let's talk money. I've collected two different types of royalties from my streams and from my publishing royalties, which I get through BeatStars and Sony Publishing. I've collected a total of $132,608.89. And with my performing rights organization, which is BMI, which by the way, collects your writer's share of your royalties, I've collected $40,853.72. So after adding both of those up from my 1.1 billion streams, I've made a total of $172,462.61 off of those royalties. And take into account, I may only be getting a 10% to 25% split on these records. So if you were to have 50% or 100%, you'd be making way more money. And that also doesn't count the advance money that I make whenever these labels pay me up front for these songs or the other side of it, which is master royalties, which my dumbass has just not set it up properly to collect those yet. So I might have a lot more money out there. But to be honest, collecting royalties is just a complex thing and it's kind of difficult to understand. So if you want to see me break that down in more detail, check out this video right here.